purpose of your heart. Amen. Okay? So Christy, right? Kristen. Kristen. So do you have desires in your heart? Has something in your heart? Maybe, I don't know, like my wife, what's crazy is, is that, as I said, she just did that song at 7 o'clock, you know, last night. But uh, years ago, we were sitting in a church. She's sitting in the front row, and a pastor says, he was talking about uh, that, you know, he was going to start having, like, lessons to teach people how to do music, right? She can't read music. And uh, he said, you know, he listed all these instruments, you know, boom, he said guitar and piano and, you know, flute and, you know, and all of a sudden, Brandy goes, and who knows, when you will even play a harp? And it's like all of a sudden, something happened inside her. It was weird. It's like I sit next to her and all of a sudden it's like this thing goes over and just, you know, boom. She had a smile on her face and she looks at me and I thought, juice heart. I heard it. He was talking about juice heart. You know, you know, <laughs> you know these things, they cost a little bit. You know, and I, don't, I don't know how we do it. Anyways, but what's crazy is so she's like, I really feel God has put on my heart to play the harp. And I'm like, no way. I mean, honestly, I just, you know, I didn't think it would happen. And uh, so the first thing we did was we bought a little tiny little harp. It was literally this tall. And uh, she started playing it. And she sounded horrible. I mean, really, bad. And the first step she took was she went to this little church. And it was Russian people, okay? So they didn't speak our language very well, right? Now, have you ever heard the song Amazing Grace? After she was done, she removed the word amazing and got rid of grace. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> it was horrible, you know. And I, I think at her now that I watch her play, it's like, whoa, you know, God makes beautiful things out of dust. Is that amazing? And I know it's the, the grace of God on her life. But the first time she played, literally, a pastor, our pastor friend came up to her and said, you know, I just don't think it's ever going to be. Huh? I mean, he literally said, this was not her gift. This was never going to happen. And uh, I think when he said that, it's like all of a sudden, stirred her up. I mean, I put a bite inside or something. You know, so you ever had anybody ever, like, kind of crush your dream? You ever had something that, you know, you, Debbie, you got something in your heart, and you just felt, man, God put it in there. And then you told it, you shared that dream with somebody, and they're like, don't think so. Ain't going to happen. Never going to be. Jeff, you ever had that happen? Yeah. Yeah? You know what I mean? And so, uh, the, the dream crushers. You know what I mean? Like, da uh, not David, Joseph, years ago, right? Here's Joseph. God gives him a dream, and the dream is that he's going to be like his mother and his father and all his brethren are going to bow to him one day, right? And what did his brothers do? Throw him in a pit? Yeah. <laughs> you ever felt like you're in a pit? Yeah. I had a dream one time. I'll just share this with you guys real quick, but... In the dream, I was in a pit. Who likes being in a pit? You ever all, everybody been in a pit, right? And uh, so in the dream, I'm at the bottom of this pit. And I'm like yelling, saying, hey, can anybody hear me? Because there's no way out. And I mean, you couldn't climb up the walls. And uh, there's nothing in there to climb up. And I, I'm, I'm like looking up, trying to see what's going on up there. And I can see these workmen. You know, like, and uh, they, I can hear, like, these caterpillar, you know, like those, uh, you know, those big, with the big shovels, right? And all of a sudden, I hear these, you know, up on top, and there are rocks around. Now, get this, are you right, ready? <laughs> and these caterpillars from trucks begin to push these rocks into the pit that I am in. And I am, like, going, oh, my God, I am dead. And so I literally, I got in a little corner of the pit. And I put my hand over my head, and I prayed. And I didn't pray with faith. I prayed, God, I'm dead. I'm going to meet you pretty soon. <laughs> it's nice knowing you, you know what I mean? But this is it, you know? Sounds like I, some art prayers. Yeah, I mean, it, it was like, this was the end. And I, and all of a sudden, boom, you know, rocks start coming out. I heard them. I even opened my eye, and I saw one bounce right next to me. And I'm like, oh, my God, I am dead. And uh, anyways, so all of a sudden, all these rocks come, you know, bounding down. And then all of a sudden I hear this silence. And I almost like, as I'm down in the pit, I don't know if it was a vision or something, but I pictured all of a sudden like all the sound on top stopped. It was silent. And there was these work guys eating their lunch. <laughs> I mean, that's what I just saw, you know what I mean, while I'm down there. 
And so I get a vision within a dream. How do you like that, you know? And uh, when I opened my eyes and I looked, those rocks built steps all the way up and out of the pit. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, I, I mean, so it was like the very thing that I thought was going to crush me, the very thing that I thought was going to be my end, the very thing that it looked like there's no way it's ever going to happen was the very thing God used. Now, wow. think of the life of Joseph, right? What happened to Joseph? Anybody remember? He shares his dream, right? And, and I, I consider this, you know, don't share all of your, you know, uh, uh, six by 18 dreams with two by four minds. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What, what's your name? Come on, Jesse. Jesse? All right, so Jesse, God's got big plans for you. Amen. He does. God already, he, he has seen into the future. And you may not know what he has planned for you, right? But you just have to trust him no matter what. Because young Joseph, right? You know, he's a young guy. Now, I don't know how old he was, but he all of a sudden is given this vision. He tells all his older brothers about it. And they're like, you know what? Let's throw him in a pit. <laughs> how do you like that? Good brothers, right? Right. And these are, uh, these are our founding fathers. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of funny. Uh, so, uh, but God had a plan. Yes. And, and see, I want to tell you that, guys. Look, everybody say this out of your mouth. You ready? But God, but God has a plan. Has a plan, yes, Lord. And we may not see it. We may not know it. But I do believe if you seek God for it, He'll reveal a little piece of it. So I'm just going to share a little thing. So with my wife, God had a plan for her to play harp. Is that amazing? Now, what's interesting, Sarah, you got to get back in here. You know, and hear this. But uh, my name... Are you ready for the meaning of my name? In Gaelic, it means one who rejoices with the loom or harp. That's the actual definition. You can go in and you can check out the name, my name. Now, when we got married, we were married a whole year before I even knew she played the piano. I'm at a pastor's house, and I'm uh, listening to beautiful piano music in the background. And I'm like... I'm like, man, that music is beautiful. I wanted to get like a CD copy because I thought it might be kind of nice just during, you know, prayer time or whatever. He looked at me like, that's your wife. I'm like, no. No. That's funny. Yeah. And, 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 and he, wa he actually grabbed my arm and walked me around the corner and my wife is playing piano. I didn't know she played piano. Is that like crazy? I don't know where I was going, but it's interesting anyway. So, so you just never know. You never know what God has planned. So it ends up that we're married after seven years, and that's when I shared about when she heard about playing the harp. So then to come, down, come to find out, my name means one who rejoices with the harp. Is that amazing? Yeah. So then a friend of ours has a dream. And in the dream, Sue and I are ministering together, and we have like these two gifts, and these two gifts become one. I didn't know what my gift was. I didn't know what her gift was. And it ends up that, you know, then a friend of mine, and I'm sharing just a couple of things real quickly, and I'll tie them all together. My friend, a friend of mine has a dream that I wrote a book. I didn't know I could write a book. You know what I mean? I, I didn't know that was, you know, so, okay, well, if God thinks I can write a book, so I wrote, you know, I wrote, you know. so I, 